Welcome to the lab! In this episode, we're going to craft a spell effect. Specifically, we're going to make a bridge out of a scroll. I wanted to try my hand at something a little different. Specifically because I know I've been making a lot of vampire stuff, and a lot more is coming in the near future because I just picked up all of... Well, at least the first half of my vampire army. So I thought it'd be really fun to make a spell effect and the reason I got into crafting, or my excuse that I gave myself in order to craft more and give myself direction, was Frostgrave. And it's got a lot of really cool spell effects in that game. I already made some extra walls, which are really handy to be able to actually place a wall on the battlefield. Let me see, I got one right here. These were the walls. Six inch by three inch, boom, done. Cast it, it's on the field. So in a similar vein, to uh, the element elementalist that has those, the sigilist, I think it is, can make a bridge out of the scrolls that they're carrying around. They cast a spell and they turn their scroll into a giant bridge. And I thought that'd be really fun to come up with a design in order to get those to work. And honestly, these are really simple. I made these four. This is my test run. This took the longest because I was figuring out what to do and I did make a couple mistakes on it. But since then, I've kind of figured out the exact procedure to take to get them done a lot faster and a lot tidier. And then you can decorate it with a bunch of different designs if you want. This is, again, my test one. So, uh, and it was like one in the morning, so I really didn't care how sloppy my handiwork was, my drawing of these random sigils and runes and stuff that I put on them. Because I figured, like, if it looks sloppy, the wizard's probably got a sloppy hand line. And let's be real, wizards are probably a lot similar to doctors in that they probably have the worst handwriting because they're just scribbling like crazy in order to get runes out. And obviously this looks very different than my first one. That's because I didn't draw this one. I showed my test scroll to a friend of mine and he really really was excited to try it out so he and his girlfriend each did one and then I did one with a bunch of random symbols. I should have put a lot more smaller stuff on this but it doesn't really matter because these are embiggened versions of whatever tiny scrolls of runes or whatever your sigilist would have had on him. This right here is my sigilist. Let me show you the size comparison. So let's dive in and I'll show you how I made these. Might be a little bit of a shorter video because these really didn't take that long to make. They took me three hours in total in order to make pretty much all four. Frostgrave, second edition. So here's the bridge spell. The important part is that it needs to be six inches long and two inches wide. I mean, that's a rough estimate, but yeah. And I, I made four because I didn't think there's going to be a ton on the field, even if everybody casted it. Then I took a piece of uh, thin wooden dowel. You can see I marked off two and a quarter inch sections here on the dowel with my knife. This is just a I just marked off as many as I needed with a knife, and then I cut them with my hobby saw. Honestly, it was really easy to slice through this stuff. The dowel, I don't know, a little under a half an inch. I'm not sure the size. I just grabbed it for less than a dollar from Michael's. Then I sanded down the edges so that it'd be smooth. They are longer than two inches because the paper is supposed to be two inches thick, or wide, rather. And of course you want to want, want to have the meat of the scroll. It's wider than that, I guess. The actual wooden parts that hold it. <coughs> the, then I use chipboard. This is what makes it so that things can stand on it. This is in between the pieces of paper. They're two inches wide but they're slightly longer than six inches because you need to have a spot where you can put the wooden dowel on the end. I think they're, gosh, I think they're like six and a half inches long. And I just cut them out. Being as, I mean, you don't really need to be super precise, but it helps keep things organized, I guess. Then I took a couple sheets of paper and I cut 
two and one eight chunks of paper. I wanted it slightly larger than the chipboard so that the chipboard would be less noticeable unless you were looking at it directly from the side because you want them to be thin as possible so they just look like one sheet of paper that's been rolled out. Then I took the chipboard and one of the dowels to make sure that I could, you know, had enough overhang and line it up all right. Took some super glue set. up some super glue on the dowel and then I just put them together Did that on both sides or all of them no, it only takes a couple of seconds really no time at all to get this done and if they start to tear away from the chipboard while you're putting stuff together or pulling on them you could just as easily soak the end there with a little bit of more super glue. Then I took a dark brown wash that I made for terrain and I shaded the ends of the wood so that it wasn't as bright and looked like I didn't want it to look like a cheap pine or whatever, which is what it is, but you know, you can paint it to look different. Basically just staining it. Makes it look more fancy. <laughs> you can darken it as much as you want, or use whatever colors you want. You can also make the ends of the scroll look fancier. Um, I was tempted to drill a hole and put a toothpick in and then paint it to look like metal or whatever with different bobs and bits on the end, but having simple wood honestly keeps it so that it looks more like terrain and not like a centerpiece. Then I took those strips of paper that I cut and I tucked them in to the areas that they're supposed to be to try to measure how long I would need to cut them so that they would fit in places. And I believe the inside is about six inches long, and then the outside is, I want to say nine, a little over nine. It doesn't matter if the, the longer piece that goes along the bottom that wraps around is a little longer, because you're going to put it on first, and then you're going to put the piece that's about six inches long on top, and it'll hide the overlap, if that makes sense. You'll see it in a little bit. I used the blunt end of my knife to tuck it under so I could kind of get a rough, roughly exact. <laughs> it's not exactly precise, but it makes it close enough. You can see where it's, it's going to tuck. And then I dry fitted them. Dry fitting things together is almost always necessary, just in case you mess something up. Make sure things tuck in. Behind under, hide underneath the dowels so that it doesn't look like it's a separate piece of paper. Then I watered down a lot some golden brown paint. And I just brushed it over all the paper. All I really did was cover one side of the paper because no one's going to see the underneath. The only parts that they do see are along the edges where there's a bit of, bit of overlap. So I just brushed some along the edges of each paper, and then I dried it with my heat gun. You can also just wait for it to dry for 15 minutes, but I was impatient. Then I put some super glue on one end of the paper, lined it up so that it was evenly across, and then I tucked it into the dowel until it's stuck. See, so yeah, right here I'm lining it up just to make sure that it's not going to turn sideways on me. Wrap it around, pull it, make sure that you can get it to look nice. Pull it tight, and then again use the blunt end of my knife. You'll see me grab that. Afterwards you'll see me. I just wanted to make sure that I knew where it would tuck. I used, um, is it called tacky glue and then just brushed it out and then I also took whatever excess was left or what was on my brush 
and put it on the back side of the paper. And then I pulled it across and smushed it down so that it was nice and tight. And here's where I was talking about, you'll see me wrap around and use the knife in order to get that nice crease in there. Then I took the super glue and I put it on that crease. Nice line of it. And then I used the knife on the dry end to tuck it in so that it was nice and evenly tucked in there. Some more tacky glue. Put it around. Again, the excess went on the back of that piece of paper there. And I made sure that it was able to tuck onto the end and smoosh it down flat. Just to make sure that the paper was connected all the way across. You don't want the edges to be peeled, peeling back. Then I coated everything in a thick layer of varnish. Here I was just testing out how well I could spray with the AK Ultra Matte Varnish, I think is what I was using, but it doesn't matter, you can use spray can. It's just this was something new that I had and I wanted to try it out. Then you doodle whatever you want. I did uh, sun and moon design on that one, and then you can see here are the other ones that are laid out. So that's how I made these. They're, uh, they are very simple, but man oh man do they look cool. It really doesn't take much in order to get a table of terrain to look pretty awesome. And I think they're a great spell effect. I don't know, so you climb one of these, you know, you're up here and you claim this treasure or whatever, or you got some other guy coming along, get your wizard and you have him climb up past his spell so that he can walk between the top up here and get better range across some of his battlefield with some of his spells maybe. Obviously cross from here to here without having to climb down, climb back up. I can see how these definitely can be useful in the game, but other than use, they just look awesome. <laughs> I think they do anyways. They look a lot of fun. If you have any other suggestions for spell effects that you'd like to see me make, please leave a comment below and I'll see if I can get around to it. I had a lot of fun making these and I would love to make some just more effects that I could put on the field in order to show off what is ac actively going on. If you like this video, Go ahead and hit that thumb button, the up one, not the down one, the up one. And if you'd like to see more in the future, please subscribe. And remember, until next time, experiment with your hobby. Experiment.